You are the one who should tell this, Joss. It happened chiefly to you. It happened as much to you. Most people don't have that in 30 or 40 years. Most people don't have it at all. And then we are silent, because we are both smelling the Les Oye smells of hot dust and cool plaster walls, of jessamine and box leaves in the sun, of snails cooking in garlic, and the house's own smells of damp linen or furniture polish, and always a little of drains. We are hearing the patter of the poplar leaves, of a tap running in the kitchen, of barges puffing upstream, and the plop of a green gauge falling. The green gauges had a pale blue bloom, especially in the shade. But in the sun, the flesh showed amber through the clear green skin. If it were cracked, the juice was doubly warm and sweet. It was no wonder we ate too much. You were glad enough to come back. We never came back, Uncle William. The Green Gauge Summer by Ruma Garden. Dramatized for radio by Dawn Lowe Watson. You're going chasing across France with that gaggle of children? We won't chase, William. We'll be going quite slowly, by train. I'm taking them to the battlefields of France. The battlefields of France? Why? Why indeed? I shall work in Paris when I'm a fashion designer. Gordon's ghost! I shall take them to the battlefield so they can see. Oh, mother! Yes, Jas. See what other people have given for your sakes and what other people will do and sacrifice. <sighs> I thought perhaps that will make them think. And they're so rude and selfish. Oh, Pooh, you haven't enough money to take us to France. I shall use the legacy. The legacy is for college. This is college. You need to learn what I can't teach you. <laughs> J'arrive, j'arrive. Ferme la bouche. Tais-toi, Rita. We stood there, in the hall of the hotel, in our school clothes. Will Mouse in his grey shorts and jacket, us in our St Helena's coats and skirts and soup plate hats. Even Joss looked almost ugly in that hat. There was a French lady behind the grill in an office off the stairs. She had a moustache of heavy black down on which Will Mouse, who noticed his appearance, had fixed his eyes. Are you all right, Mother? Uh, yes. L'hôtel n'accepte pas les malades. Does that mean she won't take sick people? I think it does. Oh, please help us. Our mother is very ill indeed. Her leg is poisoned from an insect bite. She has a fever. I am not the owner. I am Madame Corbet, that's all. Then where is... where is Mademoiselle de Prel? Mademoiselle Zizi? She's going out to dinner at the Chateau de Marie. They say the president of the Board of Trade is to be there. Then we can't see Mademoiselle de Prel? Naturally not. But what can we do? You could go to the Commissariat. <gasps> Commissariat? Police. Go, police. Come. You may leave your baggage. No, thank you. <gasps> Who are they? I don't know. It may be Mademoiselle de Prel. The man's wearing tail. Is the smell the lady? Good God, an orphanage. Don't worry, we're not staying. Come on, we will take the luggage first and come back for Mother. Uh, where are you going at this time of night? To the police. The police? Why? Because of you French. I'm not French, I'm English. Oh, please. Zizi, huh? uh. she's ill. She's very ill, Zizi. We must help. But Elliot, our dinner. All the same. But we shall be late. All the same. Irene, bring Dr. Giroux. And open the rooms, Morissette. And you, Paul, oui, take up their luggage. The room was filled with dim light. I was in an immense bed, and beside me lay Wilmouse. I swung my legs over the edge of the bed and walked to the window. <coughs> Hester? Hester! You must come down. What hideous flower beds! It looks like a garden from one of our French grammar books. Yes, there's an orchard. 
should be on. You must come, Cecil. There's one of the little girls down there in the garden. I have a belief that as soon as a human goes out into the morning, it is spoiled. Except in Monsieur Joubert, or perhaps children. Do you like children so much? I don't know any. Joss? Joss, aren't you awake yet? Oh, Joss, you look awful. You're quite green. Have you been sick? Oh, if you could get a basin or a bucket. From where? Oh, downstairs. Go and look. Supposing I meet someone. Then ask them. But, well, what is the French for bucket? I opened a baize covered door found a bowl, and was on my way upstairs when a white door on the landing opened and a man came out. He was wearing a silk patterned dressing gown and was smoking a cigarette. It was Elliot. What were you doing down there? I went to find a bowl. Just my sister is ill. Oh, God, children. <laughs> Eaten too much? She is not that sort of sister. Here you are, Joss. I found this in the kitchen. Oh, hello, Hester. I've just seen that man Elliot coming out of his room. The one with the white door. And he wasn't as nice as I thought last night. That's not Elliot's room. That's Mademoiselle Zizi's. Are you a better girl? Yes. Cheer up. You'll be fine soon. <laughs> yes. Is there anything you want? No. Oh, well. I'll leave you to sleep. Who let that man into my room? I did. How dare you? But he's in charge of us. Who said so? Mother. She asked him. She always was an idiot. He treated me as if I were Wilmouse. Oh, oh, get me that bowl, Cecil. is horrible. He said something in French when he served me, and when I got upstairs, I looked it up and found it meant wipe your mouth and your bib. Is your sister any better today? Not really. Not yet. She gets these attacks. Cecil will have to be responsible for everything. That sounds a very weighty responsibility. And there's Wilmouse. Wilmouse is no trouble. He's in the garden with Miss Dawn and Dolores all day. Miss Dawn and who? His models. Oh, those dolls. You must not call them dolls. He takes it all very seriously. He drapes his designs on them. He doesn't sew. He says that will be done in his workroom. When he's grown up. We mustn't bore Elliot with Will now. Oh, but I'm fascinated. Ah, there you are, Elliot. Still with the children. Please, Elliot. Who is that? Hmm? Who went out through that blue door as you came in just now? I saw him earlier. That was Monsieur Joubert going out to catch the first light on the river. Who is Monsieur Joubert? A very famous painter. Even an ignorant little English girl should have heard of Marc Joubert. Elliot, I must talk to you. I must know, what can I say to Irene? You can tell her that you can put two into a single room and charge for both. Elliot, you're laughing at me. Not laughing, predicting. But can they pay? If they can't, I will. Have you so much money, Elliot? It comes and goes. I wasn't trying to listen. I just couldn't help hearing him kiss her. And then what he said next. Those children can be useful. How useful? Stop people talking. Let them talk. Don't be silly, Zizi. This is a little town and you have to live in it. The children will give me a reason for being here. After all, now I'm their guardian. They can be camouflage. I did not like us being camouflage. 
I walked alone into the orchard and reached up to touch a green gauge. It came off, warm and smooth, into my hand. I looked quickly round, but no one came, no voice scolded, and after a moment, I bit into the ripe golden flesh. Then I ate another, and another. Then Elliot came out. He was aloof and unapproachable. How did I know then that he had these times? But as if the first green gauge had been an Eden apple, I was suddenly older and wiser, and did not try to speak to him. He passed me as if I didn't exist. I walked a little, sat by the river, then went back into the house, and there was Paul. He stood looking me over. Alors, vous restez? Yes, we are staying. I hope it will not put you out. He shrugged, and Paul's shrug was indescribably rude. He said something in French, and I caught "found children, stray children." Then, as he went, he pulled my hair. Late that evening, I met Paul again. The dogs lay out on the warm gravel. Voices came more gently from the house. Everything was filled with peace. He was sitting on a stone step outside the kitchen. I was trembling. As I came nearer, he stood up. I thought, "All right, if you want to fight, but please, Miss." Thank you, mercy, Paul. Was a French cigarette. You seem to have settled in here very quickly. It was as if Joss were being changed, sloughing off the old Joss like a skin. We told her some of what we learned sitting on the kitchen steps those summer evenings, but I never said how I'd seen Paul pull one of the maids down on his lap and run his hand up under her skirt. But that was nothing to the way I watched how Mademoiselle Zizi would catch at Elliot as he went by, and how he would kiss her hand or her arm or her neck, even her mouth. Hester, of course, told everything. Paul sometimes has the end of a bottle of wine, Joss. I too would often take a mouthful and pass it on to Cecil. Then she gives it back to Paul again. Oh, how disgusting! We wipe the top on Paul's apron. Ah, oh. ah, oh. Paul. Why does Madame Corbet hate us? Because Elliot arranges everything for us. See. Si. Does she hate Elliot? See. Si. Why? Parce que le... she loves Mademoiselle Zizi. No. A lady love a lady. See. Si. I think Mademoiselle Zizi is in love with Elliot. That is so. Paul, does Elliot love M. Mademoiselle Zizi? <laughs> Pas lui, not him. There was something in that laugh. To him, that was what women were for. And I remembered something he had already told me. I had not believed him. At fourteen? <laughs> you mean you made love when you were fourteen? Oh, no, Paul! Get away! Don't do that! How dare you? The petit citron. <laughs> he laughed again at the outrage on my face, and with his finger, tapped my nose as one would a little animal if it were too eager. There was no doubt about it. It was I, not Paul, who was bad. It's Elliot. It is Elliot. Has he been to Paris again? Do you think? I suppose so. Oh, hello, Shirley. Ah, oh, Zizi. Come in and sit down. Hello, children. Hello, Hello Elliot. Elliot. Good evening, Iran. 
You must have a drink, Elliot. You are so tired. How she fusses him. Have a comfortable chair, not that <laughs> one. Let Morissette get you some other shoes. For God's sake, Zizi. Look, Wilmers, I, I've brought you a book from Paris. What sort of book? It's on the old masters. Study the pictures, especially the primitives. They will give you a sense of drapery and colour. But books like that cost a fortune. Thank you, Elliot. Not a fortune, just a bit. The pages we need cut in first. Oh, Cecil or Hester will cut them for you. Here, Cecil, you can borrow my knife. Oh. No, 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 it's, uh, it's too sharp for you, Wilmers. You be careful, Cecil. Is it silver, Elliot? No. Steel. I remembered that knife. Once I dropped it point down on the grass, it went in and stayed upright. Paul! Dépêche-toi! Les Américains! Mother had not been alone in bringing her family to see the battlefields. This was the high season for visitors from all over the world, and Les Oyer was ready for them, eager to show off its own war wounds. Every day, Paul picked out the fading bullet holes on the staircase and freshened up the bloodstains on my cupboard floor with raw liver. I was made to tidy and turn out of my room. Then, daily, under the urn in the middle flower bed, he buried what was left of a liver with a skull they claimed had belonged to a soldier so that Rex and Rita would dig it up. He laughed and told us the liver was a pourboire for the dogs. It lived there since 1731. Is it as old as that? It has seen ten wars. After each war it has healed, but now I'm the only one left. Paul says there's a date for the house under the wisteria, and it's 1885, and her father was a butcher. He bought the house with money he got from selling bad meat to the soldiers. Everything here's a lie. Do you know... Mademoiselle Zizi's eyelashes take off. And her bosoms, too. Bosoms? Do you call them bosoms? I saw them lying across a chair. I have made bosoms for Miss Dawn and Dolores now. Elliot is ruining the business. You tell every client we are full up. Not always. And this is the season. All those empty rooms. I do not want to have strangers here with You're us. You're mad. Because I do not want to have talk. Talk? The whole town is talking. Someone will report us. In the end, we shall lose our star. <sighs> Ten years. I have worked here to get that star to pull this hotel up and you just throw it all away. <laughs> What's happened? Can you see? Shh. Madame hit Zizi, slapped her face. Don't let them see you. Zizi's holding her cheek with her hand. <laughs> What's happening now, Cecil? Zizi's kneeling down by Madame. She's holding her, rocking her. She's saying something. Chérie, jamais, jamais. Oubliez ça. N'y pensez plus. We tiptoed away, out into the garden, where we nowadays spent most of our time, there or on the riverbank, or wandering the tiny cobbled lanes of Vieux Moutier. For now we were turned out by day, and it was all Elliot's doing. It's all very well for you. You go off to Paris. I had 58 people for lunch today, and these children to see to as well. Don't see to them. Give them some food and turn them out. Can I? Of course you can. Children like picnics. After all, it is la grande saison. Just when things start to get interesting in the mornings, we're sent away. They're too busy for us with all these luncheons. It's ignominious, being made to keep out of sight. I quite like it. We're free. And Paul makes us very nice picnics. Madame would be furious if she knew how nice it and how he swaps the yesterday's rolls for today's. They told us never to come back until four o'clock. So we walked through the blue door into our own world, where the bulrushes grew, black-headed, taller than we, where the willow leaves were blown silver by the wind, where whole families lived aboard the barges, with washing, hens, firewood, and sometimes a garden planted in pots. And it was there, 
on the riverbank or in the cove at one o'clock that we unpacked the wonderful picnics Paul had prepared for us. I think now it was those hours by ourselves that kept us sane and restored us. Although we chafed at being sent out, when the time came, we never wanted to go in. I flinched from Les Oyers. Mademoiselle Zizi, Madame Corbet, Elliot, Paul. But then I thought, they had nothing to do with us. We are just watching. We were still children. Joss! Your shutters are open. Are you better? Quite better. Morissette brought me some lunch. You've washed your hair. And you must wash yours. Mademoiselle Zizi's hair isn't red. They make it red in a shop. I know. It's black at the roots. Who's that? It's only Joss. Joss, the one who was ill? One of you? I was so jealous. That night I could have said cruel things to Joss. Wished her harm. Ah, Monsieur Elliot, and uh, this is your... Yes, c'est ravissante jeune personne. Adorable, adorable. I hope the children haven't been bothering you, Mr Elliot. We don't bother. <laughs> will, will you have a drink? Could I have a still lemon? Wilma, well, go and order one for your sister. I? I'm reading. You? He never asked us to have a lemon. Elliot? Wilma says you want a citron, is that true? Merci bien, mademoiselle. I had not understood. Understood? That any of you were so big. Dinner was not comfortable that night. Paul was distracted, staring at Joss, who seemed not to understand what was happening. Elliot's eyes kept coming back to her, and Mademoiselle Zizi's followed his, watching. At last she left the dining room, and soon called him out after her. Impatiently, he threw his napkin down and followed, and I was able to tell Joss what had been worrying me. Joss, you see the French colonel and his wife? Yes. While we were waiting, before dinner, Elliot told the mother was his sister. He couldn't have, because she isn't. He said he was our guardian. I suppose for the moment he is. Yes, but he said he always took us to the seaside. But this year he brought us here. Was this in French? Yes. Then you misunderstood. No, they were lies, Joss. Mademoiselle Zizi, say uh, you go to office, please. Who gave you permission to change your time for dinner? What does she mean? We've been having ours with the chef and the others. Who said you could change? You want us to eat with your servants? Morissette cannot manage with so many in the dining room. But Cecil says you often have 60 people for luncheon. Tonight we're only 15. I do not wish to have children with adults. But Monsieur le Colonel had his little girl with him. Do not argue with Mademoiselle Zizi. Your mother left you in my charge. She left us in Mr Elliot's. Shall we ask him? You may have dinner with the guests, but I forbid you, absolutely forbid you to trouble Monsieur Elliot. Are you quite all right? Quite all right. Oh, I've been so worried. You are forbidden to worry. Come, girls, sister is saying we must go. Your mother needs to rest. Goodbye, mother. Goodbye. Bye. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, monsieur. Vous allez bien? Oui, merci. Et toi? Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, madame. Merci, ah, madame. Ça va. Bonjour. Ouais. In France, you must always shake hands. Watch the children. Oh, look at those sweets. Just look. Hmm? What are those, Elliot? Brandied cherries. Vermoutier is famous for them. The French understand living. I wish I were French. <laughs> Come on. We'll have a drink at La Girave. Dazzled, we sat at one of the small marble-topped tables I had passed so often. 
just tried not to glow, but she glowed, sitting there very erect, holding a glass of pale golden wine. Her hair caught the sun through the awning, and from the heat, or perhaps the wine, tiny beads of sweat came out on her forehead and neck. Elliot put out a finger and touched one. Dew of Joss. And Joss sat oddly still. Does it taste of salt? Sugar and spice. Ah, bonjour, Irene. Ça va? Ça va. What are those? Our picnics. Paul leaves them here on the table for us. We have to go out now. Uh, I shall have a picnic too. A picnic? For you? For me. At the blue door, we met Monsieur Joubert coming in. When he saw Joss, he took off his hat and looked back after us as we went. After luncheon at the cove, Hester and Wilmouse paddled, and I lay face down on the sand. Joss's and Elliot's voices were a low murmur. They seemed to have a great deal to talk about. Then suddenly, Elliot sat up, pulling Joss up with him. Come along, all you lazy bones! I have to go to Soissons. Who would like a drive? Yes! In your Rolls Royce? Yes! We can look at the cathedral. But won't Mademoiselle Zizi mind? Why should she mind? Something on your heads, girls. Here, Cecil, put my hanky over your head. Oh, you know, you've got one of your own, Hester. That's a good girl. Yes. Here we go. Come on, Mother. I am sorry about our clothes. I like your clothes. Oh, you couldn't possibly. I like everything about you. But you said you were going to Paris. I must see my family, Zizi, eh? Can't a man have a day or two off? The picnic and Soissons had been gold, but the next day was green, for Elliot took us and our picnics to the forest of Compiègne. People forget about Compiègne. Oh, look. Wilmos looks like a fawn running in the bracken with that wreath on his head. <laughs> A chateau! Like the Sleeping Beauty. Oh, it's a fairy tale day. It isn't. It's true. It is true. Then, towards evening, when the light slanting down the glades was deeper, richer, heavier, and we too were heavy, surfeited with happiness, he said. I think we'd better have some dinner at that little restaurant we saw by the lake. Dinner? Why not? Well, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> All the more reason to dine. Won't they be cross? We shall telephone. But there was no telephone at the restaurant. And when we got back to Les Oyers, Mademoiselle Zizi was waiting for us. You had a good time? Thank you. A very good time. Morris said, will you please take Monsieur Wilmers up to bed? Oui, Monsieur. Allez. Zizi, Allez. give me a drink. You look as if you had had a drink already. A little Van Rosé. I want a real drink. So do you. Zizi, I found Paul in my room just now. Stealing? I don't think so, just nosing around. But you can't have that. He must go at once. In the middle of our season? You can't employ a boy like that. May Elliot. I said he must go. <sighs> Très bien. Joss, please, Joss, ask Elliot not to. All right. 
Ah, Elliot. Elliot. Paul wants to be a lorry driver, and if he has to go now, he will lose his summer bonus, and he will never get his lorry. He's saving up. Very well. If you will come out with me again today... Can you spare the time? Well, of course I can. We will go to the carve. What carve? <laughs> the champagne cellars. You can't be in champagne and not see those. Are we in champagne? Oh, I shall show you. It may be a bit much for Wilmos. I need to know about champagne. The gates are gold. Gilded iron, Wilmos, but handsome, I agree. Here we are, everybody out. Oh, what are those? They're bottle baskets on wheels. See, they, they, they run along their own little railway line. There are ten miles of galleries, like the catacombs. We went down into the darkness and coldness of the galleries, saw how they made champagne, and a long time later came up and out into the sunlight again. Then our guide said to Elliot, May I say you have a fine family, monsieur? We like being called a fine family, don't we? <laughs> uh, perhaps you would all care to take a glass of our champagne with us, monsieur. Champagne? For us? Can I taste a little? A little? <laughs> if you will step into our small museum. <laughs> Ah, they are just coming up. A moment. There has been a director's luncheon. This year, the guest of honor is one of the greatest detectives in France. If you wait a moment, you will see him. He's coming out. The famous Inspector Jules Cailleur. Cailleur. Nous vous remercierons infiniment, monsieur, mais uh, I had forgotten. I, I have an appointment in Reims. Je regrette to. Uh, come along, children. Merci mille fois, monsieur. Come along. I want to walk home. Come along. Un autre pas, peut-être. Merci. Au revoir. Monsieur, de rien. This way, please. Come along. Good argument. Just get into the car. We'll go and do something else. This is the road to Soissons. I know. You said you had an appointment in Reims. I know. Do you tell lies, Elliot? Yes. I'm sorry I had to do that. Then why did you? I had a reason that you would not understand. And you can't expect us to understand, can you? All right, I tell lies! I tell lies, and so do you, and you, and you, all of you. For you to tell them is different. I didn't ask to be a hero. She means you are grown up. I see. You expect you will lose your faults when you are grown up? I hope so. You poor little fools. Elliot, what has made you so unhappy? Being perfectly happy for two days. Oh. Has none of you ever tasted champagne? Oh, don't be silly. How could we? We've never even seen it. There were roses on our table that night. Clean starched cloth clean napkins made into cot hats, and by each place, a new kind of glass, high, with a three-inch stem. What are these? Flute de champagne. Glasses for drinking champagne. Oh. Here we are. Oh, oh hello! Yes. Now I do a little taste. Mm. Oh, bon, c'est bien. Monsieur Wilmers will take a little. May I offer some to Monsieur Joubert? What's your wine, say? Vous prendrez bien un verre, Monsieur. Vous prendrez bien un verre, Monsieur. Merci, Mademoiselle Charles. Santé. 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 <laughs> it goes up your nose. I like it going up my nose. <laughs> Monsieur Elliot, you must take the bouchon, wet it, and touch it behind Mademoiselle Beer. Of course. 
Always with the first bottle of champagne you taste, that must be done with the cock. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mademoiselle Joss, you must keep it forever. Oh. Elliot! Elliot! Cover here, Joss, turn your head. Yes, easy. Irene says you ordered champagne. Dormants for those children. Yes. Are you mad? It was for reasons. I think Mademoiselle Zizi has forgotten her rouge, Hester. I know your reason. Then Joss got up. She did what she thought was the best thing. Mademoiselle, vous voudrez bien prendre un verre? There was a moment when she actually took the glass and Elliot said... Santé. And then she threw the champagne at Joss. <gasps> the champagne trickled down Joss's skirt and she ran from the room and out onto the terrace. Cece, I want to see you alone. I should never have let them be there at dinner. That girl! But of course you take their part. For three days I have scarcely seen you. Why, Cece? I happen to have a little time and amuse the poor brats. Brats? Kids can say brats. That's children, then. You don't think of them as children. Don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous? For three days... Zizi, Zizi, you're jealous of a little girl? First she is big, then she is little. Is it not too much that we ask that we might occasionally talk without Irene? And why may I not remain? Because this is not your business. Zizi is my business. Irene, please go. And leave him to talk you down. Go, go, go! Let us go. Let us go into the garden. We shrank down into our chairs as Madame Corbet stormed through. Then we heard Mademoiselle Zizi's voice go soft. Elliot, écoute, écoute moi. Please, please let us in for this uncle and get them away. Dear Zizi, because of a child. She isn't a child! Of course she is, to me, to us. I saw your look at her. Don't be absurd. Then send for the uncle. Zizi. I gave my word. Besides, I can't have the uncle an Englishman here now. I explained to you, Zizi, I, I can't have talk yet. But if I don't mind... I mind for you. You never know. No. Zizi, promise. Promise me you won't do anything. Irene says... You know Irene would do anything to separate us. Promise. Without even looking, I knew he had put his arm around her. I looked at the floor. The blood thrummed in my ears, and my little lemons throbbed. Let's get away, Elliot. Somewhere. Anywhere. Why? Because. Because? I can't bear it. The house, Irene, them. Get a coat, then. Come through the garden. We will go to the giraffe. Joss stood there. Her sandals were drenched. The hem of her dress soaked. Her eyes went to Elliot as Mademoiselle Zizi walked past, her head high. There was no appeal. She simply looked. But he squared his shoulders and went after Mademoiselle Zizi and passed Joss as if she were not there.
go to bed? We can't just sit here in the dark. Why is it dark? When Madame Corbet goes out, she turns off the electricity at the mains. It's one of her economies. She's probably gone out to spy on them. I can't go to bed. Slowly, into our orbit came a glimmer of light, growing ever larger. Joss raised her head as Paul came through the kitchen doorway, carrying two lighted candles in bottles. What's he saying? Bad words about Madame, old ape, bad meat. What's he got there? The champagne cork. You want? It doesn't seem very lucky. Pas de bonne chance. C'est la vie, les gens. He kept the champagne. <laughs> Look, it's in the ice bucket. I don't want it. Champagne, c'est toujours de champagne. All right. Epovupol? Sunday. Oh. <laughs> Encore un coup, hein? But it's all locked up. <laughs> si. Madame Corbet a emporté, has taken the key. <laughs> si. But Paul, oh, go on. <laughs> Allez-y. Go on. Josie, he should shut, shut up. Shut up. Champagne nature. Blanc de blanc. <laughs> oh, thank you, Paul. It was sweet of you to get this for us. <laughs> Joss, don't. He will think you mean it. Paul's face had flooded with crimson, and that pleased look was in his eyes. What if he does? Paul, you give cigarettes to Cecil. Why not to me? Cigarette? <laughs> Joss, <laughs> don't! Why not? You will hurt him! I'm going to hurt him. You are getting drunk! I want to! I'm going to get drunk! I'm going to do all the disgusting things they do! L'autre bouti, Paul! Boozy Rouge! Boozy! <laughs> Boozy! Boozy! Cecil! Boozy! Blanc de blanc de blanc de blanc! Boozy! Blanc de blanc de blanc! On your knees to drink this! <laughs> what does Boozy say? He says we should pray! Let us pray! Joss, you are not to! You are not to! Pious prig! Not a prig! Oh. Oh, don't! Don't! Tell Paul to open the wine! Merde! Hit it! Tape des sous! Shut up! I don't want any! Another cigarette! Encore un galois! Come get it! Viens-y! Joss! You are not to! You are not to! Ne le touchez pas! Toi, va faire dodo! Go to bed! I won't! Joss! Joss! Oh mon dieu! Oh mon dieu! C'est pas moi, c'est pas moi, c'est elle! Elle est même elle chasse! They force me! I do I... not know what has been going on here, but it is not good! Good! To be drunk at their age! On my wine! Eh, ma petite canne! My little table! Oh! Zizi! The villier mama rien de bousy rouge! Petite canaille! Oh, cette petite crapule! Trop laid! Chut! And who is to pay for it? You can put it on my bill. Mademoiselle Cecile, can you walk upstairs to your room? Let me take Joss. I think you have done enough.
how grown people feel. They are even worse pigs than I thought. I smell. Mm, I smell too. Not as badly as I do. Monsieur Joubert was wonderful. He told them to put it all on his bill. He wasn't angry. Not with us. And I was drunk. Very. He carried you up to bed. Not Elliot. Elliot wanted to, but Monsieur Joubert wouldn't let him. I must wash. I just want to be clean. I am going to give Monsieur Joubert one of my paintings. But Joss, he's famous. He's one of the best painters in the world. Then he will know when a painting is good. You did this yourself. Yes. No one helped you. No. I'm going to an art school soon. Why an art school? I need to learn to draw. <laughs> that won't spoil you. In the meantime, Mademoiselle Joss, you can come and paint with me, but only you. I think Mr. Elliot is trying to catch your attention. Oh, merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Joss. Yes. I'm sorry, Joss. I had to do that. You won't talk to me? No. Tomorrow, I'm not going to Paris. I will be busy I, I... tomorrow. And it was true. From that day, the other people in the house hardly saw her at all. She sat in the heat with no umbrella and only her old straw hat to shade her. She was sickly pale at the end of each day when we went to pay our evening visit to Mother, who was better, but not up yet. Monsieur Joubert ought to send Joss in when it's too hot. He doesn't notice me. And are you looking after Wilmouse, Cecil? Yes. But Wilmouse goes off alone every evening. Where does he go? For a little walk, like an old gentleman. I think he likes to go and look at the new barge, the Mary France. It's anchored above the cove. Elliot likes sunbathing there, but he never takes any clothes off. As Hester spoke, I could see Elliot in my mind's eye, in the cove. She had taken a snapshot of him lying in the sun and used the last of her pocket money having it developed. She had shown it to no one, but the photograph was stuck on cardboard in a frame of dried white shells from the river and standing on her dressing table. There was always a tiny bouquet of flowers in front of it. And I thought, I am too old to show what I feel or to say it. How is nice Mr Elliot? We don't see him now. He's in Paris all the time. And Mademoiselle Zizi keeps going to the telephone asking for the same Paris number. It rings and rings but never answers. See? There are hundreds of tiny fish nibbling at your crumbs, Hester. I suppose food is just about their only sensation. Food and death. Look, there's a big fish hovering over them. And they could all be gone in a moment. They're too busy living. Funny. I was never afraid of death before. That was a day we would remember always. Not only because it happened to be Hester's birthday and the chef had made her a wonderful cake, but it was the day when Elliot began to be where he wasn't and wasn't where he was. They had carried a table into the garden and everyone had come to Hester's party, even Madame Courbet. But not Elliot. Elliot had gone to Paris. Only he hasn't. He isn't in Paris. He's here. How do you know? I saw him. You can't have. I, but I did, and... What's the matter, Will Mouse? It was Elliot, not in Elliot's clothes. You must have made a mistake. I don't make mistakes about clothes. I was walking home along the bank, and Elliot was there suddenly, walking in front of me. And he was wearing blue trousers, like the overalls the men wear here, and one of those striped jerseys. Elliot doesn't wear those sort of clothes. I know. Are you sure? Don't I know about clothes? He went off the path, just above the bulrushes, where it goes into the wood. It looked, I thought... But he couldn't have. Couldn't have what? Come off the new barge, the Marie France. But that's a dirty old barge. He wouldn't. There are two men in those blue cotton trousers and no jerseys, quite naked above the waist and black sailor caps. 
It wasn't Elliot. It certainly wasn't Elliot. And it couldn't have been, because Elliot came home from Paris about nine that night. Oh, Elliot! Did you have a good day? Damnably hot. You look exhausted. I am. Ah, oh, Hester! Happy birthday. I, I'm sorry, I, I missed the party, but I brought you some chocolates. Oh, Elliot! D O R A T. One of the most expensive chocolate shops in Paris. There you see, he was in Paris. Yes. Elliot seemed fidgety the next day. He went into Vieux Moutier three times for various different reasons. Then, just as twelve struck on the Hotel de Ville clock, he came to the cove where Hester and I had taken our picnics and turned us out. I keep away. I want to sleep. But we haven't eaten our picnics. Well, go and eat them somewhere else. We wanted to bathe. Well, go to the plage for once. We should have to pay. Oh, you little skinflints! We have no money. Why not? Nobody has given us any. Usually, we have pocket money every week. Good. Sorry, I... why didn't you ask? Look, here, I have three weeks now. There, one, one for Hester, one for Wilmas, two for Cecil, and three for Joss. Take them. <sighs> well, what's the matter now? It's too much. Must you be so appalling, be honest? Look, I'm tired and I need to sleep before this big dinner tonight. What dinner? Go and bathe. Go! If anyone comes near me before five o'clock, I shall skin them alive! I suppose we'd better not have another ice. No, better go now. Let's go back to the cove and creep up on Elliot. For what? You remember Father told us even looking on anyone good or great will feed the soul. Elliot told us not to. How will he know? Look, fast asleep. Shh! You've woken him. He stirred, lifted his head, and it was not Elliot. In Elliot's clothes, under Elliot's cap, we were looking into the face of a dark, unknown man. We froze. Then we ran, ran until we got back to the blue door. And then, as we went in, Mademoiselle Zizi was coming out. She was freshly powdered, and her scent came in waves. Are you going out? Only to the cove to meet Elliot. The blue door closed. Then, after a long while, it opened again. Mademoiselle Zizi came through, and behind her was Elliot. Ninety-four places. It is a banquet. It's the brass instruments ball. They will make speeches. They will make a lot of speeches and eat a lot and drink a lot, and then perhaps they'll dance. To the brass instruments band. Oh, ne touch it, ne touch it, pas, Wilmans. Prenez garde, Monsieur de Chaspiers. Now, go and make yourselves comme il faut, children, in case anyone sees you. We dressed in our white seersuckers, and then went along to see what Joss would wear. Joss, are you having another attack? Joss, it's Cecil. Speak to me, Joss. I hate her. I hate her. Hate whom? What happened? She has ended the painting. Ended the. Yes, 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 yes. But how? He asked me to have lunch with him. Elliot, oh, idiot, Monsieur Joubert. It was so hot outside. There was no one in the dining room but us, and them. Mademoiselle Zizi and Elliot. Yes, Madame Corbet was too busy to have lunch. Well, perhaps we, Monsieur Joubert and I, laughed too much. Elliot, Elliot kept looking. He didn't like it. Then, then when he had gone, Mademoiselle Zizi came to our table and said, "said, oh, it wasn't French, but I understood. Oh, I wish I hadn't. Shut the door, Cecil." She told him she could not have it in her hotel, an old man and a young girl. That I had, had, 
bothered Elliot. What happened then? Well, Monsieur Joubert got up and bowed. Not to her, but to me. Bowed to you? He said, when you are a little older and in another place and your mother is with you, we shall meet again. I shall write to her. And he left. For good? Yes. I saw Paul carry out his luggage and painting things and the taxi came. What is happening downstairs? It's the brass instruments ball. What are you going to do? Go to the party. But we haven't been invited. I tried to be nice. I found my own thing and kept out of the way. Well, now I won't. Supposing they don't ask you? I shall make them. I can make people do what I like. By people. I knew she meant men. But Joss, if you make them, won't it seem that you might... might be what Mademoiselle Zizi says you are? She thinks I am what she is. All right, I shall be. Only worse. What else am I to do? Go on painting. Without Monsieur Joubert. I shall go to this party. That dress is too tight. You show. All the better. Don't put too much makeup on. I'm not Mademoiselle Zizi. What's the matter with you, Cecil? I have pains. Where? Everywhere. Growing pains. Tell me when the doctor comes. Monsieur le directeur. From the hospital. He's here. Go down. Go one by one. Slip in among them and start shaking hands with everyone. Then they can't send you away. And don't tag on to me. We did as she told us. I looked back over my shoulder and Joss was twitching the skirt of her dress straight. She frowned, shook her hair more loosely and went down. She went straight to the doctor, holding out her hand. He kept it. Mais c'est la petite anglaise. Oh, not so little. I am not very little. Pas si petite, am I, Monsieur? <laughs> she sounds silly, like a lady. He is asking her to dinner. Une autre place, à côté de moi. Permettez-moi de vous faire mes compliments, Mademoiselle. Elliot was by the bar, pretending not to look at Joss, while she appeared not to see him. Before, we had been unhappy, but it was truthful. Now we seem to be playing a game. I walked away from them all, out into the terrace, where it was cool and quiet. But there was no peace for long. Cecil! 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 A most extraordinary thing! I was having my walk along the river, when I saw a man. Not a dark man. Yes, he had a motorbike. It was a big new red one. He wheeled it along the bank and then onto the plank bridge to the barge. Onto the Mary front? Yes. The man looked up and down, but he couldn't see me. Why not? Because the bulrushes are so tall. Then do you know what he did? He wheeled the bike across the deck and dropped it over the other side. Into the river? Yes. Don't be silly. He did. Cecil, What are you doing out new... so late? Where have you been? For, for my walk. Bull Mouse always goes for a walk. You be quiet. You know quite well you are not allowed out so late. But... No, nope, not a word. I will not have disobedience. You can go to bed at once. But Elliot, you never... Hey, Monsieur Elliot. Vous êtes trop dur. In England, we discipline boys. How often have I told you? You have never told him. Cecil, stay where you are. I hate Elliot. I hate Elliot. <laughs> I hate him. Will Mouse. Will Mouse. He's locked you in. I'm sorry, I had to do that. Will Mouse is little. He wanted to see a banquet. I know. I'm not as bad as you think. Look, I've brought him a bit of the banquet. Chicken chasseur, gaufret potatoes, meringue, and a glass of grenadine. 
He won't eat it. We shall see. Leave him to me. Something had happened to my pain, and I discovered what. Dazed, I went into Joss's room and found what I needed in her drawer. She was at dinner. So was Mademoiselle Zizi. Madame Corbet and Morissette were busy, and Mother was in hospital. I had to manage for myself with those strange first necessities of being a woman, and it was inexpressibly lonely. I began to cry, with excitement and self-pity. I was still crying when Elliot came out of Wilmas's room, and I heard Wilmas give a tiny laugh like a crow. Elliot is a magician, I thought. Still here? Yes. I think he'll eat it. He, he liked the drink. You needn't lock the door. I must. I will come up later. You're in a state, Cecil. What is the matter? Is it Wilma still? What is it then? Tell. Mother always said never to talk to anyone about it, especially not a man. She said women should be private. But I have turned into a woman. Just now. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> well, that isn't anything to cry about. It hurts. Not when you consider how exciting it is. Exciting. Of course. But how? Because you are now ready for love. I, Cecil. You. But I am not pretty like Joss. You're not pretty like Joss. You're pretty like Cecil. I, pretty. Very. And he kissed me on the mouth. That scoundrel, Uncle William called him later. I only know that that night he seemed like an angel to me. I came down the staircase to see better from the hall, and became aware of Paul behind me, bringing from the kitchen a smell of sweat and garlic. He had not noticed me. He was watching Joss. There was something in his face that made me afraid, something wild, like a wild animal that only thinks what it wants. I saw Joss smile at him. She looked at Elliot, but he walked away to the bar. She turned and waved at someone. I looked to see who. It was Paul. Cecil, look, look at Paul. Oh no! That wave was too much. Paul gave a tug to his apron that broke its string, wrenched it from his neck and threw it away, combed his hair with his fingers, and reached Joss before Monsieur Dufour. The chief police inspector who was weaving through the dancers. Then he bowed. Mandel Joss. Et toi, mon gaillard, go back to your place and stay there. Go, Degolas. Go now. Dance me. They don't want me to. She is not snob. A tongue they pull, wait. Then, just as Paul was putting his arm around her, Elliot cut in front of him, almost from inside his arm. And danced away with Joss. Oh, poor Paul! They're taking him away. They're marching him off like a criminal. Joss and Elliot did not speak as they danced. She kept her eyelids down, so that her face looked closed. Elliot's was set. The music stopped when they were by Mademoiselle Zizi. Elliot slowly took his arm away, but kept Joss's hand. Her chin began to shake. Then he held out his free hand to Mademoiselle Zizi. Look, he's putting Joss's hand in hers. Take her to bed, Zizi. No. Yes. The party is over now. Good night. Hey, where are you going? Into the garden to smoke.
Cecil. Mm. Cecil. Cecil, wake up. What is it? Shh, don't wake, Wilmouse. What is it? It's Paul. Paul? On a ladder, looking in at my window. Paul is? Yes, he's coming in. What for? Oh, Cecil. He has been drinking. What can we do? I will get Elliot. No, but... don't you dare. I will go and call Madame Corbet. You can't do that. Why? She will send Paul away. I don't care about his lorry. Get into my bed. I will go and talk to Paul. But Cecil... I'm not afraid of him. You're sure you don't mind? It isn't you he's come for. So you'll be all right. Stay here. There was no sign of him, and with a feeling half of relief and half of flatness, I slid into her bed. Then, with a thrill of fear, I saw that the two ends of the ladder were against the sill. What would Paul do when he found I was not Joss? Would he do what he wanted to do with her? I gripped the clothes round me and lay as flat as I could in the bed. My cheeks were hot my heart beating. A head and shoulders rose black outside the window, dark, with a white patch of face. The ladder and its figure lifted backwards into the air. I went to the window. The ladder lay on the grass. It was still quivering. Paul was standing free, rubbing his elbows and knees. And facing him was Elliot. What was he doing in the garden at three in the morning? But was he Elliot? He wasn't wearing Elliot's clothes. These were the dark man's clothes. The cotton trousers, striped jersey, the cap. I saw the glint of his eyes. A small case on the grass. You part there. You go away. I wanted to warn him not to go near Elliot when Elliot was that cold stranger, but Paul made a sudden sideways lunge at the case. Then I could not see who hit whom. Paul's arms went as they had done when he battered me, but Elliot was fighting as one must not fight, I thought, appalled. Elliot waited. Never hit anyone who was down, Uncle William had said. But as Paul's head bent lower, Elliot struck down, so quick like lightning. I thought I saw a long, thin flash in Elliot's hand. But he would not carry his paper knife in the garden, surely. Paul slid gently forward onto the grass, face downward. His legs kicked once or twice. Then there are only quivers, like the ladder. Elliot, our Elliot, not our Elliot lifted Paul and carried him away round the house. I stood there, watching the empty garden. I seemed to hear Elliot's voice saying, I'm sorry. I had to do that. Then Elliot was back. Alone. I don't know why that frightened me, but I could not bear it that he was alone. He came to the ladder and stood looking down at it. Then he turned, picked up the small case from the bushes and was gone. Children seen Paul? Not since the party last night. <laughs> Madame Corbet. I am busy, Ceci. Two charabans is American for breakfast, 60 places, and no Paul. Oh, Madame, Wilmouse is still asleep. I don't think he's well. Shake him. We have. We've tried to open his eyelids, and his eyes show the whites. He feels very cold, and he's breathing strangely. Oh, you, why worry me for that? He's tired out with excitement, so he sleeps. I've made up my mind. I'm going to the hospital to get Monsieur le Directeur to see Wilmouse. You could telephone. Oh, I can't in French. And I don't know how to get the number. Oh, I wish Elliot were here. I heard Mademoiselle Zizi telling Monsieur Dufour that he's in Paris. Monsieur Dufour? But he's from the police. What's he doing here? 
Monsieur Elliot has a business in Paris, is he? So I understand. How did he go to Paris today if his car is here? It has been in the garage for Cressage. Mm. Look, their tag is on the windscreen if you wish to see it, monsieur. to breakfast, the dinner last night, Paul gone, and now they imagine illness. Voilà, monsieur le médecin. Allez, voyons, qu'est-ce qui se passe Qu'est-ce qu'il a, le petit... Mais il a été drogué. Drogué What is drogué Drogued. Oh. Will Mouse. Will Mouse woke in the afternoon, but he was drowsy and stupid, and his voice was thick. Joss stayed with him, and Hester and I wandered out along the river. We avoided the cove, and between us was a weight of silence. Until we came out on the towing path. Look! The Mary France is gone! Full de diamant. An audacious sleight of hand in the Etoile Cartier. The thief escaped with a hundred million francs worth of diamonds. What does it mean, Marisette? <gasps> Tell her. You read, Cecil. An armed... Qu'est-ce que c'est, malfaiteur? Gangster. Armed gangster steals one hundred million... See? Million. One hundred million francs worth of jewels and escapes. The jeweler's secretary was being driven in a ah. large Mercedes. La femme était dans le coup. The secretary? You think? Read, Cecil. This is the third time that there has been one of these... these Hold-ups. ...in this quarter. The swiftness and audacity led Paris police to think it is the work of an experienced thief, perhaps the international bandit Allen, who was behind the jewel raids in Cannes, whom all efforts by the police failed to catch. They are looking for a man of 35 or thereabouts, tall Slim. I have seen him, and I shall know him again, says Inspector Jules Caillé of the Sorete Générale, who is handling the case. This time, we shall get him. Will Mouse, wake up! Wake up, Will Mouse! Hmm? Can you understand me? Listen, I want you to promise me something. Is it important? Very important. Will Mouse, if they, anyone, ask if you saw anything, say nothing. Promise? Did I see anything? Cecilia, you are. You must tidy your room. There are two parties coming for lunch. Shall I make the bloodstain for you as Paul isn't here? I had meant to be sarcastic, to show Madame we knew what frauds they were, but she only nodded. To her, it was normal hotel business. You could bury the skull as well. But first, put Ritter and Rex in the kennel, or they'll dig it up now. long alley towards Robert's compost heap. It was always Rex who found the skull. Now he came to me, bringing something. He put the thing in my hand. It was an espadrille, grey, white and sodden, with a tape still knotted. I flinched and dropped it. I took three steps to see what it was that Rita was now digging. In the brown yellow of the leaves was something pale. I took another step, and the whole orchard seemed to tilt. The pale thing was a foot. There was a leaf stuck to it, a little bright yellow leaf. I bent and absently scraped it with my nail. My finger touched the skin, and it was cold. The smell of decay and rotting weeds filled my mouth and nose. The smell of death. There was no escape now. <coughs> I went upstairs to my room to wash and wash my hands. I was trying to wash away that feeling of that cold and the smell. 
I was trembling, and the beating was back in my head. You know what you have seen, said that beating. What are you going to do? Then I had an overwhelming desire to look at Elliot. Elliot, who had done that. So I went to Hester's room. The flowers were still there, but the frame was lying on its face. I picked it up, and it was empty. I stared. I took it. I told Hester I wanted to copy it, make a portrait. But you didn't. You gave it to Monsieur Dufour. No. Then what? I sent it to Inspector Cailleur. The doorman's man? Yes. Just! So Elliot shouldn't play fast and loose. It's cruel. It's not only me. It's Mademoiselle Zizi. And Morissette says the diamond merchant's secretary woman too. He played with all of us like chess. He wasn't playing with you. Shut up! Shut up! We were the only people he didn't play with. When did you do it? Yesterday. It caught the post. You don't know it was he? If it isn't, they won't come. They will get it this morning. And Paris isn't very far. What will they do to him, Cecil? Will they put him in prison? They have to catch him first. Joss, they won't put him in prison. Why not? Because if they catch him, I think he'll have to be hanged. And holding on to the bedpost, I told her what I had found. They don't hang people in France. They guillotine them. It's the visitors for lunch. It's too early. Cecil, you look. I can't. You can. You didn't send for them. I look from the stairs. What again? It's Monsieur Dufour. Again. And Inspector Caillet. I must have let out a little groan, because Madame Corbet looked up and saw me. Cécile, go into the garden and call Mademoiselle Zizi. Mademoiselle Zizi. What was that car? Who is it? The police. Police? Where is Irene? With them. They want you. Mademoiselle Zizi, you must come. Zizi, Zizi, Bazi. You. You sent for them. I? Why should I? It was you. Listen, listen. There is something you should see before you go in. It, he... It's in the orchard. What is it? Look, quickly, in the heat where the leaves are thrown, quickly. What is it? Something, I think, I found. Oh, look, look quickly. I will go in and say you are coming, but go, go. Et mademoiselle de Prel, elle vient. Dans un petit moment. After Mademoiselle Zizi stopped screaming, a horrible calm lay over the house. The house, not the garden. The garden was full of police. We were rounded up like cattle and sent upstairs, while Madame Cabet installed Inspector Cayer in the salon for his interviewing. What's that dark blue van? It's the hearse. It's come for Paul. He's on a stretcher all covered up. Paul saved up for his lorry. Why? Why did God do it? God didn't. It was Elliot. Elliot always said, I'm sorry I had to do that. If you're really all right, you don't have to do things that are sorry. He wants to see you. Who? Inspector Caillou. Can those children understand French? Oh, very little. Except the big one, perhaps. Mm. She's not here yet. Shall I close the door? No, no. Leave it. It's too hot. But he was here all afternoon. You have heard? I have heard. But that does not mean he was. Uh, tell Cecil, translate. Uh, but he's saying that there. Right under our noses. Ah, under your noses. Oh, what's the good? 
He is at 76 hours. He is hundreds of miles away by now. I don't think he is. What do you mean? I know where Elliot is. Shh. Where? On the Mari France. But how do you know? He was dressed for it. You told me what he was wearing. Barges go very slowly, but I don't suppose they will think of looking for him there. Joss had not come down with us, but now she arrived, and in the doorway she met Mademoiselle Zizi, who was without her makeup. Her face a strange grey white colour, and her hair tumbled half down on her shoulders. They have told me. So, it was you who sent the photograph. Of course. Just sit down, Hester. They're talking about us now. Ah, follow me, mes enfants. Which of you took this photograph? I did. Ah, and you are Esther, hmm? Ten years old. I must congratulate you, my petite. It is most valuable. Valuable? You mean my photograph helped you? Helped me? Well, it brought me straight here. I am one of the few, the very few, who have seen Alain. Esther, I must ask you for the negative. But we shall give you something uh, very pretty in exchange, eh? A doll. You would like a doll? No! Ah. Listen. I am going to speak to you as if you were not children, but grown up. You know this man, Alain? No? Ah, you know Monsieur Elliot. He's our friend. Your friend is a thief. A thief who stole in many countries, deceived people, and was often cruel to them. I must tell you that sometimes he killed them. He killed Paul. Are you going to like him after that? Yes. Like him or not, you have a duty. You know what duty is. If you know anything, have seen anything strange or out of place about this man, Alan or Elliot, it is your duty to tell me. Your duty. Well? He... he... Yes, he? He lay in the cove. Yes? But I had pinched her. No. You, young monsieur. You were the one who had the sleeping dose. What was on the tray, Alan? Uh, monsieur Elliot brought you. Food. Banquet food. Mm. Chicken and party toast. And a meringue. A beautiful meringue. Anything to drink? Grenadine. Ah. The supper things were washed up, of course. Mm. This child knew something. Mm. They say he slept for two days. It must have been strong. Ah, the drug was the reason. Both. But it was abominable to drug a child. Oh, this was Alain. The boy is lucky to be alive. Who are they talking about? You. Why? Because they think Elliot put you to sleep. Elliot? Yes. Why? Why? Because, my little man, you knew something he did not want you to tell. It was not a very pleasant thing to do, was it? It was silly. Why didn't he ask me not to tell? He needn't have put me to sleep. He could have trusted me. Oh, was this man God to them? Why did he send you to bed? I was out late. Why were you out late? I had been for my walk. Ah, where did you go? Along the river. Ah, did you see anything? Did you see anything? I saw the barge. What barge? The Mari France. What was the barge doing? Nothing. You like barges? No. Oh, then there was something special about this one. Something you saw, perhaps. Perhaps. I would rather not talk to you. I am not playing! I don't like this. I want Mother. As if Mother's name had been a touchstone, we all began to weep. Except Joss. There was no one, no one for us, and we quailed like little rabbits, chased and cornered, ready to be snared. Helplessly, we wept. I told you this was not for children. <laughs> Some of them are not children. 
You're asking them questions. You need only ask her. Ask her what the ladder was doing on the lawn under her window. Why the marks of it were on the grass. Ask her! Inspector Kaya looked at Joss, who had risen like a girl in class. I rose too. Is that a child? You saw her with your own eyes. She drove Paul out of his mind. You saw that too. Well, ask her what happened. Elle a couché avec l'un après l'autre. She didn't sleep. She was wide awake. Why? She came to my room and sent me in. You? Yeah. They begin young in England. Don't be a fool, Cecil. These little children must go out. I could not go on. I swallowed and felt as if the tears were running down my throat. Only one person would have defended us. Elliot. And he... So, two of you. And this is what I took into my house. Caesar, you haven't a shadow of proof. Haven't I? Why did I have to put Monsieur Joubert out of the hotel? <laughs> they said it was painting. Painting. <laughs> mother. I want mother. Help me. Help me. Helpless in my tears, I looked out of the window and saw that a man had come in through the gate. There was something familiar about the man. His small figure was square and solid in the Frenchness of the courtyard, his skin fresh and pink, and there was a wonderful calmness about him. My heart suddenly calmed too. Uncle William! Oh, Uncle, Uncle William! Goodness gosh, what to do with Cecil, Charles, and Wilmouse. Uh, uh, my name is Bullock. Bullock of Bullock, Roper and Twist, Solicitors, Southstone. That is in Sussex, England. A votre service, monsieur. Monsieur Dufour, Madame Corbet. Yeah. You have some trouble, the police? Uh, you have doubtless heard at the station or on your way here of these shocking events. I have heard nothing. I do not speak French. I have come to take my sister, if she can travel, and my nieces and nephew home to England. You said you wouldn't come, and you came. How did you know to come now, just now? But I was sent for. Sent for? Well, yeah, this came yesterday. Um, come immediately, Hotel des Oeillets, Vermoutier, Marne, France. Your sister in hospital, children, urgently, repeat, urgently, need your help. But who sent it? It isn't signed. Someone must have sent it. I tried to put a surreptitious hand on Hester. But I was too late. Elliot, of course. <gasps> Elliot. Yes, he always did look after us. The fool! Uh, oh. 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 Stop her! Oh. Now. Oh. Let us see, eh? Huh? Ah. Shalom. 11.25 yesterday morning. You was heading for the German border. No, obviously. Get me Laval and that... No. No, no, wait. Chalon. But Chalon is almost here. She went to her kilometer. 21 kilometer at 11 o'clock yesterday. He had been at the dinner. Ah, but only until about midnight. He had had at least nine or ten hours. I don't understand. <laughs> Could he be walking? Oh, the roads watched? Cross country. Oh, somewhere slow where we would not look for him, of course. We are looking everywhere fast. Very clever, Monsieur Alain. Slow. View Moutier, Chalon into Germany. Chalon? You mean Chalon sur Man? On the Man? The Man. The Man. In The Green Gage Summer by Ruma Godden, Cecil was played by Ellie Bevan, Joss by Abigail Doherty, Hester by Kira Jansen, and Wilmouse by Luke Newbery. Elliot was Michael Maloney, Zizi, Claire Marchioni, Madame Corbet, Rachel Atkins, and Paul, Theo Fraser Steele. Monsieur Joubert and Uncle William were played by Sean Baker. Mother and Morissette by Jenny Lee, Monsieur Dufour by Brian Parr, and Inspector Cailleux by Chris Wright. Other parts were played by members of the cast.
The Green Gage Summer was dramatized by Dawn Lowe Watson and directed by Sally Evans. <laughs>